What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Seen But Not Heard. We'll feature music from Xenophonic, Krog, a new track from Krog, by the way, and a little chat with Carl Agell from COC Era Blind, my personal favorite COC album. It's fucking awesome. Really excited about this interview. You can kind of see me fanboy out a couple times, but it's going to happen in this, so stay tuned. We're going to start our episode with a new song from Krog. They recently went into the studio and recorded a live video slash recorded uh, audio for a couple so a couple old songs, uh, a couple new ones, I believe, but this one really sticks out to me. Uh, we featured Krog on our first episode where we did uh, Harvesting the Swine. This song, Skull Collector, is hard to believe, but even more brutal than that tune. So, Skull Collector, Krog. I'm here with Carl Agell from fucking COC, Leadfoot. Some legendary projects, my man. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great, man. How are you? I'm great, man. I, like I said, I truly appreciate you taking your time to talk to me about... Um, one yeah, of the, my pleasure. One of the greatest things in my life was the discovery of the Blind Album. And you being part of that is... I've always wanted to sit and chat with you about this because... Sure, uh, sure. Like I said, I had some stories for you. When I was about 15 years old, I joined a uh, very Southern Rock, uh, very Crowbar-esque 
uh, style band, and uh, sure. COC was a big influence for us. And my bass player, he ended up sliding me a copy of Blind because I had only heard Deliverance at this point. This is like 1994, 95, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he popped it in, and we're listening to it at practice. And I'm like, that's not Pepper. He's like, dude, that's Carl. I'm like, dude, where has this guy been? <laughs> so he explained to me the kind of the process of like, you know, they kind of went from a punk to metal and then to like this Southern rock style shit. But Blind has always stuck out as the premier COC album for me. So like I said, it was, uh, it was like the first time I heard Metallica. <laughs> right on. So, can so you, yeah. Can you kind of give us a little uh, hindsight of that project? Like, because like I said, COC has gone from like the punk to the metal to, you know, what they are doing now or have been doing. Um, what was the insight of that album for you when you guys were writing that? Like the influences, all that fun stuff. Well, here, here's the thing, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an old punk rock, hardcore kid with long hair, right? I, so it, it just didn't spring out of like some kind of metal thought, you know, uh, place completely it, we were all punk rock kids hardcore punk kids back in the early 80s and i um i was in the uh connecticut hardcore scene up up north from north carolina where, where i still live and um i i saw the band in 1984 with eric Ike singing on the i for night tour and then saw them in 85 and then my my hardcore band seizure opened up for them in 85 and then i uh, go down to New York City and see him play at CBs and all over the place and became friends, you know, like okay. we all back in the day, it was just a thing. We all talked. This is way before the, the internet, you know, the interweb and uh, we we're just pals and uh, trading seven inches and talking and staying friends and I'd stayed in contact with them and uh, found they were looking for somebody. And so anyways, long story short, it just means that what I'm trying to say is we're on a similar tra uh, trajectory, you know? Yeah. We're all came, coming out of the punk rock scene and at the same time as they were into like Black Flag, they were discovering Black Sabbath, you know? And they were discovering, you know, Deep Purple and they were discovering thing, you know, yeah. like jumping from the punk rock and then digging back. And I was doing this exact same thing. So I, I saw an ad in the Village Voice uh, back in the classified, you know, classified section of an actual newspaper. Remember those? Oh yeah. And, it, and they said they were looking for a cross between uh, HR from the Bad Brains, Ian Gillen, and James Hetfield. And I was like, I can do that, you know. And I'd been in a bunch of different bands, and I, I um, anyways, I went down there, and then we were just on the same path. So that's what I'm trying to say is that yeah. we we were uh, hardcore punk guys uh, that were into that, but also starting to look and borrow from things from other eras and other that, that moved us. And I guess it was part of it was that we were all getting better at what we did. We were uh, better at singing, better at playing guitar, better at playing drums, you know, like it was evolving yeah. and we we're looking at other ways to express ourselves. And that's where line came together. And it was kind of a big, big damn experiment. You know, it was, um, not planned so much just kind of like hey let's try this let's try this like let's try this we were in the studio up in new york city uh in a uh at baby monster for 10 weeks okay. recording the album and um you know just kind of figuring it out on the fly and, and we had some ideas but we were just uh in there with john custer who was producing it was his first project we brought him in on and uh just learning about multi-tracking you know like and figuring out that we could go nuts you know on this 24 track studer neve console <laughs> it was just awesome so i'm just giving you a really long-winded answer but that's and I, I love it that's that's exactly what i yeah. want to do here this whole yeah. this whole series that i do is not like hard-hitting interview stuff it's i want to talk about music i want to talk about you know the, the it's cool a shit that deep. people don't fucking talk about you know no it's a little bit of a deep dive man it was it was great it was really fun uh, we all have the same like i said we were on the same like kind of you know sh you know rocket shots of where we were going coming from different scenes but the it was really the same thing it was all interrelated and we're just excited about trying shit you know like hey holy shit we just we actually know how to do more than we think we do 
and yeah. it was fun. And that's why blind is what blind is. It's it's a lot of experimentation and uh, raw punk rock energy combined with like kind of some serious metal licks yeah. and, and rock and roll licks and hard rock licks and whatever. It's just, it's, it's, it's very musical because, and, and, and we weren't like COC, I think was something before and something after, after, and I just happened to be there at this kind of like hinge pivot point, you know, it doesn't make me better than anybody from before or anybody who came later. It just is what it is, you know? Agree. And uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to have been a part of it. Uh, there was some shitty stuff we could talk about later yeah. or not at all <laughs> that happened, but that's that's kind of just you know, personal politics. It yeah. has nothing to do with the, the thing we're talking about, which is the making of the album, which was a really cool, pure, raw experience. And there were so many weird, like, tangents related to where we were living, uh, who we were with, uh, just, like, stuff that creates the environment that makes that yeah. album, you know? We were living in, in um, initially in a, uh, a welfare uh, welfare hotel, kind of, like, in, the che- in, in Chelsea, and um, on like 17th Street, and there was there was rats and puke and <laughs> crack, Jesus. and you know it was just like not not us doing yeah. crack, but it was just like shitty and awesome. You know, it was just all part of it. So, like I said, with the with this album, it's it's so similar to COC but different. Like I just you know that opening track when you hear those guitars come in, gin, gin, sure, gin, and then the fucking drums kick in and. Dude, your voice was just like the perfect mix in that in this album. Like, <clears throat> like me and my friends will have these arguments about uh, better better vocalists, but you know the ones we prefer more. Uh, like we'll go John Bush versus Belladonna, DL, uh, David Lee Roth versus Hagar, fucking Carl versus Pepper, and stuff like that. And no one's like you said, no one's wrong. Everyone has their own opinions and stuff. But you know, when I say Blind is the best COC album, I know I'm right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you're right, but because, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like I said, just the, it's a perfect mix, especially during that time. Because uh, I believe it was '91 when it came out. Yep, in November five ninety one. In fact, there uh, it's going to be reissued this year with uh, a bunch of new liner notes and a little bit of. Uh, I was actually uh, kind of interviewed for that a little bit by okay. Mike Gitter, uh, who's who's awesome, old old buddy from back in the day, who's also an A and R guy. You know, like. This is all, it's cool. So it's the 30th anniversary of this year, just uh, come November 5th. Whoa, that's 30 years, bro. Perfect timing, man. Yeah. Fucking congratulations. I know. God damn it. You're on, you actually, you're the first one. <laughs> Shit, yeah. hell yeah. yeah. Uh, because I was, yeah, I was 11 when that would have came out. And like I said, I didn't, I didn't wow. get, I didn't discover Ouch. it until I was 15 or 16. But during that time, like that album stick, like when I think about that time period, it sticks out a lot because one, you're not doing like insane thrash metal. You're not doing insane death metal. You're not grunge rock. Like you're kind of, it kind of, in a way, it should have gotten more popularity in my eyes. It should have been, it should have stuck out more in the music scene. But it was surrounded by so much. There's such a changing of the times uh, during it's, the early it was, 90s. It was pivotal. Yeah, I, I, we were we were literally up against the Metallica Black album. Yeah, that Which, came out like at the same time. And, and that's great and that's cool and no you know that, I'm fine with that but it was really hard it, it, we had some really interesting uh, reviews uh, what's the band uh, Grooves in the Heart that year Grooves in the Heart uh, you know see it's not see no you know who I'm talking about yeah, yeah. I'm an idiot I should remember this the keyboard player for, for that in inter- interview magazine did a review of the album it was like like all into our sh- it was just funny like we were like just right on the edge, you know, uh, but, you know, didn't quite, didn't quite go, you know? Like, uh, that's got to be really tough because, you know, I've never released an album in that kind of aspect or that huge, you know, to the masses. I've done, I'm a regional musician. I'm not a national musician by any means. Ne- ne- neither have I, obviously. So. That was the first one, huh? <laughs> no, so. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, so, no, no, I got, I get you, I get you, I get you. But uh, I can just imagine that. Like, all right, guys, you know, your album's coming out now. Cool. What else is coming out that time? Metallica. Fuck. <laughs> you know? All right. 
Because it's yeah. like, that's back in the day too, when you know midnight record store openings and stuff, where people yeah. would line up physically to get copies of these discs, not just download a track Tower, off Spotify. Tower Tower Records, man. I, yep. I, we did, and and that's back when bands used to go do like signings and appearances at record stores, and it was really cool. You know, I mean, it was it was awesome. But it, you know, it's all, and you know, uh, younger. People that are into this, I, I don't fault you. You just, it was just how it was. And mm-hmm. I wasn't there be- for all the shit that happened before me. You know, it's just a part of the, the thing, you know, part of the line. And um, it is what it is, man. So, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm just, ra- I'm rambling. I'm just rambling. <laughs> That's good. I, li- I like it. I like to keep it organic and shit like that. Um, so after the CD res- was released, what, uh, what tours and stuff did you guys jump on or what sh- did you do more headlining or more openings or what was going on at that time? Uh, well, we, the, the first immediate tour that was, we were at, I believe we were actually on the tour as it came out was, uh, we were co-headlining with prom. Okay. And 91 and they were sporting a new thing and bullet La Volta from Boston. And, uh, so those guys went on a clay from bullet La Volta went on to like, you know, run MTV or something or, you know, whatever. I lost touch with that guy a long time ago, but I'm just saying interesting things happen, but with them. And then, um, obviously, uh, actually just before that came out, we went out in, in 90, we went out the, the first biggest tour we did was with Danzig on Lucifuge two and Soundgarden on louder than love. Oh, that's right. I, Six, I forgot six about weeks. That. And that, and then we were doing songs that we later came out on blind. Just, I think just two of them. And, and I was literally like covering the old stuff, so to speak, you know, which I was gladly doing. Cause I, that's why I joined. I was yeah. a huge fan. Of course, you know, but, um, yeah, so we came out and with that, and then uh, I don't know. We God, we did a bunch of stuff, man. It's hard to even remember. Uh, we went to um, Europe with DRI, both our first tours. Uh, we did um, uh, played with like we actually I'm trying to think. Bad Brains. We did uh, obviously open up for Iron Maiden. Oh shit. Uh, um, for six weeks with Testament and Maiden in sheds. And also then a- after that, we went out with, um, um, open up for Rollins band for five weeks. Nice. And we also did bad motor finger with sound garden in Europe. Um, there's other stuff I'm forgetting, but there's a lot of, a lot of great, great, great tours. I mean, and, for- and a lot of, and a lot of one-offs too. A lot of like, like independent, you know, yeah. independently booked weekends and stuff in between the bigger tours. So. Like for me, because like I said, that's uh, I was young at that time, so that's when I was like really getting into metal and you know just music in general, and it was all life changing. You mentioned uh, like those bands, like being on the Danzig Two tour, fucking Soundgarden, Bad Motorfinger tour. Oh yeah, like that's like that brings back so many memories to me of like me being like I said, eleven, twelve years old, watching MTV. And then, you know, reading Hit Parader, fucking Metal Edge magazine, oh, yeah. all that stuff, reading about you guys, doing all the stuff. And it's cool as shit to just sit and talk to you about this kind of stuff, you know? And, oh, man. Um, yeah. the one thing I wanted to ask you, like you said, when you were on the, uh, the Danzig tour there, and you said you were covering mostly the old stuff, how was that going over with the fans? I mean, were they... Uh, I, I think... I, no, just... Uh, I think they were... They were fine with it because they were had been waiting for COC to come back and... Um, in my defense, COC had been, I was technically singer number six. People don't really realize that I was number six, yeah, five, well, <laughs> six, uh, no, four, four, four COC. Uh, there was two guys before Eric Ike and Eric Ike did his thing. He was the first guy that was like on anything that was like out there, uh, eye for an eye. And then, um, Reed and Mike Dean split vocal duties on Animosity. Okay. That's when I really fell in love with the band. I was like, these guys are doing something amazing. Like, that's when I was like, holy shit, I like them, and now I love them. Yeah, dude. And then um, after that, with Simon Bob, um, you know, came on and did the Technocracy EP. 
and took over when Mike and and the we were just kind of backing off on stuff and this would just I guess just either do backgrounds or not like Mike like uh, Simon Bob's hang it handle okay. Robert and and then um, they were down and they were they had nothing going on for about a year and a half and that's when um, Pepper actually came to audition as the vocalist didn't get the part weird didn't get the part. <laughs> Did, I got the part. He didn't get the part <laughs> anyway. And then he became the second guitar player. Yeah. And I came down and instantly got the part from New York yeah. City. And then, you know, not talking shit. But <laughs> anyways, uh, and then and then um, the rest is history, right? So I, I joined the band and then um, did my thing. And then uh, I was actually, there's a version of Deliverance with me singing. Really? Uh but, uh, uh, you know, Reed's dead. I don't have access to it. I, I think I, I don't. I don't know if I can get a hold of that stuff. He had it, and all that stuff's that's a whole other thing. Um, not accessible. But um, it didn't work out, you know. And I was let go five weeks into the recording, and uh, the rest you can look up old stuff and read about it. Right. I, I can't speak to what exactly what happened, but um, Pepper took over. I think he had always wanted to be the singer. He auditioned a singer uh, and ultimately became the singer. Now, so if this is his, 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 his dreams were fulfilled, you know, yeah. and he did it. And then the rest, you have a lot of people that uh, are very, very happy with that outcome. And that's fine. You know, and see, I, it is what it is. I yeah. stick with my fucking my saying that you are the better vocalist, but I like I like your range better, and I like the shit that was going on in that era better. But I've, but I, but, I, but I, I'm being earnest when I say that that it's I, I won't pretend I was like really happy about how shit went down back yeah. then. But it is what it is, man. That's I'm not certainly not the first person in a band. To have shit go the other way, you oh, know, like no, no, no. It's it's like the oldest, sorriest rock and roll story in the book. Like, you know, okay, my turn. You know, like whatever. You know, and uh, it's just it, life is what you make of it, right? So that exactly. could be anything. It could be a job. It could be a relationship. It was happened to be both a job and a relationship that you know just went the, the way it was, and. Um, but what was cool is that um, however shit turned out, uh, I'm really grateful that Reed and I were able to come together and do some, revisit some of the stuff and do a little bit of touring and play pay uh, homage to the past. You know, I was actually just going to bring you that can't, up. You can, yeah, you can never go back. You can never recreate it, but you can just do your take on it and. Uh, I feel like we did a really good good job of it, you know. I 100% agree, and that was the <clears throat> the second thing I was going to bring up to you uh, before we started this interview. I told you I had two stories that still stick sure. with me very well. Um, you mentioned that you and Reed, uh, rest in peace, by the way. My condolences. I've got to meet him once, and this is where the story actually comes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. When uh, Coc Blind was on seventy thousand tons of metal. Yeah, so that's right. I had met you recently. I was very drunk in the bar, and we took a selfie, and then I let. I you... think I think I was too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had like a hundred dollar bar man. tab. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. um, so the thing with uh, this, will, I'll try to keep this not long winded. But the thing with seventy thousand tons of metal is, uh, we started going in two thousand thirteen, and we did about four or five of them, and we've gained a lot of metal family from around the world so there's this couple from yeah. norway that every time we get on the cruise we meet up with them we go to the shows together we have drinks with them That's you awesome. know just party well it's lo so and behold when you guys are playing that year you know we're listening out when we first meet each other like all right what, what bands are we checking out and i'm like well first thing i gotta do is see coc blind he's like no fucking way that's right i'm fucking excited for that too so when you guys played in the hockey rink me and him were hammer drunk in the middle of the floor, just screaming along the lyrics with you and just loving every minute of it. And that's awesome. What I wanted to say with that is it's so cool that, you know, me being from Moorhead, Minnesota and them being from all the way over in Norway, this album brought us together being so far apart. But this is like a, a thing that like ties us as, as friends, as family, you know, and it was such a cool fucking moment. So that's that. No, seriously, I, you, that 
that kind of story is uh, the best thing I could ever hear. You know, like if I've done nothing else, if I check out tomorrow, I'm not planning on that. Yeah, but <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm just saying is that kind of thing is really moving. It's really awesome. It's honestly, it's, it's great. And that's, that's like the best thing I've ever gotten out of this is to hear those kind of things. I had one guy in particular who, when we did the COC blind, you know, uh, revisit with, you know, the recently or, you know, six years ago, whatever, um, we hit, uh, we played in Houston and I had this guy come up to me and say, Hey, I was a teenager when this came out and because of your lyrics, I became a uh, professor and went to college. And now the guy's like overseas, like, like he's a senior professor in, let me making this up. It blew my mind. He's like, I inspired him just from the words, you know, that he was started th thinking critically, you know, like it wasn't just uh, about the music, but he was like, man, what you're saying actually means something to me. And he started applying himself and literally <laughs> that is, that is became insane. this like serious, ac serious academic, you know, because of what I wrote. And I'm not giving myself more credit than I should be given. But what I'm saying is that, uh, just to hear something that's really, really nice. That's life affirming. You know, it's, it's, it means like, Hey, somebody actually wasn't just banging their head. They actually were reading the words, you know? Yeah. And you know, that's such a cool thing. Like even like for me on a small scale, like it's nothing like that. I haven't like inspired anyone to go to college or anything like that, but you know, inspired, you know, people to push forward with their music careers. Cause I've been, I've been playing live for over 20 years now. And, sure. Uh, I teach guitar now, so I teach real young students and just helping them move in that direction. So that's the way I do it. But that is amazing just to hear like, hey, I put out this album. We put our fucking blood, sweat and tears into this. And right. it made it changed people's lives. I mean, like you said, even if it's just one or two people, it's such sure. a cool feeling. So it is. It's it's it's, it's it, it, there's nothing like it. Right. I mean, you know, sure. I guess this is our. Uh, Religion, right? You know, exactly. like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's cool. That's totally legit. You know, but it, 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 it I think it's, uh, makes you, uh, transcend just yourself. You become part of something much greater. Like you said, even just a relationship on a cruise thing, you know, like, yep. but, 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 but beyond that, you know what I mean? Like it, it's transcendent. It's, it's awesome. And that's the best thing that music can do. Exactly. Exactly. So I feel like, I feel that that's, uh, not to make it more than it is, but I feel like that that was a very cool moment. That record uh, coming back to that is that uh, it would it, it meant that for me, it meant that for you, it meant that for other people, and that's awesome, right? We got yeah. that, we have that, you know, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, like when you guys revisited that, because that was God, yeah, six yeah. years ago. Fuck, that seems yeah. like it was just yeah. like a few years ago. I um, know, right? So, how did that whole project? reconnect because I'm sure using the name COC, uh, Crozier and Forwardy Blind, a lot of people get confused with that. I, for one, like when I saw that post up on the 70,000 tons page, I'm like, if this is what I fucking think it is, I'm going to lose my shit. And it was exactly what I thought it was. It was you doing vocals to blind. And I was like, fuck yes, this is going to be awesome. No, but I mean, well, I can see how some people got get misled. Were people upset at all with it? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, yes and no. I heard a couple of mur murmurings from behind the scenes yeah. that uh, initially it was called COC Blind because COC was kind of allowed because Reed was standing in both camps. So he could use that. He was the founding member, right? But he was trying to be, I guess, somewhat respectful of the tag corrosion and conformity was trademark now and represented the um, – the four piece with pepper. Okay. You know, though it went through different incarnations. Uh, there was two albums with Reed and Woody and Mike Dean revisiting the three piece, you know, prior to the, the last thing that COC put out. That's so right. it's just gone through so many incarnations and there's always somebody who's going to be a little bit upset or hurt by a subversion of it. But I think it was all just about the fact that, um, enough people wanted had asked and said, Hey, will they ever perform this again? And that version of the band said, no, we will never do this. You know? Uh, and Reed was like, okay, well let's find a version that can do this. Yeah. What triggered it all was in a while back, I did this thing called 
I said, you know, what the hell? There's this big venue that I book sometimes and my band Ledfooter played, uh, but a, a bigger venue in Raleigh and uh, at, at the Lincoln Theater. And I said, hey, how about I, I'm going to book a Carl, Carl Legel's Blind. It was playing words. Carl Legel's Blind. Like, I'm blind or my blind. Right. So I said, fuck it. And I had um, some of the guys from Leadfoot do it and other friends jump in. And, and it was not Reed in the band. And I did it and people were freaking out. And Reed heard about it and he was like, I think I want to get in on this. Like, it's legit. Like, and I'd gone up on, on stage and I was actually nailing the vocals. Yeah. And, you know, and honestly, I feel like. I'm way, way better singer now. And uh, not for nothing, I have several projects going on that, you know, beyond just the things people know. So, yeah. but I'm, I'm, but I'm, you know, so it was, it was nice to go back and be like, hey, I can do this and I can do it even better than I did, you know. No, I don't look as good. I know that. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> do any no, of us look you know that good I mean? after 20 years? No, no. 30 this years. 30 years. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. No, I look I look way better, obviously. I know. I don't want to turn on your viewers. Or, no, I'm gonna say uh, not safe for work content on this. No, I say exactly, exactly. <laughs> Watch out, you're gonna get so. No, I'm I'm just kidding. But but you know what I mean. Like I, the the cool thing was like, hey man, from a sheer music perspective, mm-hmm. we can nail the shit out of this. So both Reed and I walked into it, and I thought we both like seriously nailed the fuck out of it, if not improved upon it. And yeah. we had some really, really great friends uh, from from Leadfoot, you know, that, that jumped in okay. and uh, people that he knew. And uh, there's a couple different versions initially, and it, it, it morphed a little bit. But um, someone like Scott Little from Leadfoot, the one guitar player from Scott uh, from Leadfoot, was has been part of the whole thing the whole time. So uh, he was amazing and. Uh, you know, and Jerry Barrett from DC came down, uh, and uh, the, the other guitar player position morphed a couple times between uh, TR, uh, who plays in Leadfoot, and uh, initially Jason Brown, who also played in Righteous Fool. Okay. That that, that mm-hmm. one spinoff that they did. Um, you know about them? Mm-hmm. From back. No, Righteous Fool was a thing that all. Um, Mike Dean and Reed did before Woody joined him on his three okay. piece okay. with Jason Browning. So they they released, I believe, an album um, before that. So there's so much shit out there. It's just you know, <laughs> it, dig a little bit, but you know, so, I anyways thinking thinking about this right now, and I'm fairly certain I did. I don't remember. Maybe I'm making it up in my head. But uh, shortly after the boat, uh, like maybe a year or so after, I think I had. Uh, sent a friend request to you and you responded and I swear there was one drunk Sunday afternoon where I was like through my hat the ring I either I messaged you or put it on a post you did or something where it was something like hey man if you ever need someone to fill in guitar for the blind tour shit yeah. let me know and you know that was worth a shot <laughs> No, no, no. I, and, and sorry if I missed that, or I, you know, or yeah, I don't know. Because me and my buddy would get just, we'd have our Sunday fun days, and that was one of our albums that uh, man, we just fucking that, love crank it out, you know? That's fucking awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So um, the one thing I wanted to ask that I'm kind of um, moving it back to the past here again. So yeah. after, after Blind was released, and I remember vividly seeing that video on headbangers ball and i believe it was even on an episode of beavis and butthead once it, it was yep. it was so they said i was totally pissed yep <laughs> and, and i was That's i right. was so like you're one of the first artists that i've talked to that from that era of putting out music videos when that was still a thing what was the difference between the album release to all of a sudden now you have a video on mtv like how was the how did that change band wise? It was like? just it was it was just something that was expected of you, yeah. right? So at that stage it was just like, hey, our record label relativity is like we've got a video budget and you should do a video because that's what's gonna sell this record. It was like considered part of the advertising budget. Okay. So it wasn't because we were just that's 
It was just this is all you got to remember. This is all pre-internet, man. Oh yeah, dude. I, so I, it, it, no, it, but it's really hard to remember that, right? Well, I it's love really those days. I know, but it's so fucking hard to remember that. So, but it was there was a different time. There was like books and paper and you know magazines <laughs> and cassettes and CDs and all that shit like hard media. So yep. part of this was there was a channel called MTV and they were. You know, it, they, you could put out a video and get it on Headbangers Ball if you were in our genre. Yep. And get some attention and hopefully sell more records. And uh, we went on to do that. Uh, we we actually picked this a company called H Gun uh, out of Chicago. Awesome, awesome. And they they were Chicago based, and they their first big thing was um, Nine Inch Nails okay. had like a whole that video, and then they did Jesus Christ Post for Soundgarden. Nice. And, and we're like, we really like this, like these videos. Let's do, have them do something. So we showed up and thinking we were all like cool, you know, punk rock guys. They kind of went full tilt, like metal with the video. And I don't dislike the video, but I was hoping for something a little less what it was necessarily. We had ideas of uh, going to Mexico and doing like a Day of the Dead kind of thing with, you know, for Dance of the Dead. You know, like something... But it is what it is. So they did this thing, and it was recorded at this abandoned tuberculosis sanatorium in uh, Chicago. Okay. It was really weird. And there was, like, you know, dead insects and, like, abandoned hospital, really freaky, total horror movie kind of setup. I don't know how the fuck that happened. But we went there and shot this video. I'm in the gurney, and they, you know. It's all a little bit kind of silly, in my opinion, but it was what it was. Uh, no, you know, no, no, it, you know, <laughs> I know. At the time, I was like, really? This is what we're doing? And, and this is the first of two times both videos, including Vote with a Bullet, which I didn't actually sing, but I'm in the background for that video. Yep. Both videos, for some goddamn reason, they shaved my chest. The first one, <laughs> my chest hairs. And. Not like I'm like got some total disco hairy chest, well you know. But I guess I got one after that. No, they. Um, here's a weird aside, right? So, uh, we're, for that they do this thing where they have me in the gurney, and then they reach in and they're tearing my innards out. But you wouldn't have known that because MTV kind of censored part of it because they said it's too graphic oh. back in the day. But really. You need to watch people get their heads blown, you know, so, but anyway, so there's this whole thing where, so they shave my chest and apply this kind of fake, like, front of me, where, and then these, like, people with hands are reaching in and tearing me apart, and I'm like, ah, and then I come out of the gurney, that was cut out, Got and it. I'm like, I shit, no, and I'm like, I shaved my shit for nothing, <laughs> motherfucker, and then, you know, like, I'm, now I'm itchy, for like, half the tour, you know, and then, and then, uh, later on for the boat with the bull thing, where you know Pepper sings the lead, obviously, and I'm in that. They're like, we're gonna do this giant fake COC skull tattoo on your whole chest and belly thing, which I was like, okay, everyone's gonna be pissed because it's not a real tattoo, so I'm gonna look like a complete fucking poser. <laughs> you know, like, you know, right? And then, but that's what they're gonna do for this character I was playing in the mobile bull thing. And once again, they shave all my shit up front. And, and have somebody do this on my chest. And then the, all the, from that point on, every tour, you know, every date, somebody come up, you know, every tour, I mean, like every tour show, Hey man, let me see the, let me see the tattoo. I'm like, no, that wasn't real. Yeah. It's like. Fucking it Hollywood such, magic, man. No, it was just <laughs> so like, really? I, I was like, I called this. Like I look like a complete fucking putz, but anyway, so. It was what it was, but anyways. All so that was my about. whole making a video story, you know. That really, yeah, H-Gun was awesome. And the guy who did it for us, um, what was his name? Jesus Christ. Why does it elude me? The guy who did the boat with the little thing was the guy who did all the um, public enemy videos. Oh, sweet. Eric, 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 Eric Mazza. Okay. Eric Mazza. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric Mazza. This was coming to mind. And uh, he had done the By the Time I Get to Arizona uh, public enemy thing, you know, and uh, we got him on board. And it was awesome, and he did this whole ta- uh, 
taxi driver take on the whole thing, like the taxi driver of the movie kind of thing, where I was this theoretical assassin. No, <laughs> I, I don't really remember. I, I'm sure I've seen it, but like I recently stopped drinking, so there's about like 20 years of my life that I don't remember as much. <laughs> so yeah, I, need I, to, know. I need to look I, that I know one that up feeling. Again. Yeah. God damn. So <clears throat> now. What is going on now? Like, what what are you focusing on? You got lead foot going on. Like, what? I got, yeah, no, and also, since uh, I'd be uh, totally an asshole if I didn't mention the fact that uh, since, well, right re- leading up to Reed's death, and I don't want to get into the details of that because it was just tragic and yeah. way too soon and, and just. Uh, I respect yeah. that. You know, I'm just saying, you know, it's that, that whole thing sucks because. It was uh, preventable in the sense that, you know, he was fighting some demons and, you know, obviously the, 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 the old story of, you know, addiction and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. No disrespect intended. It's just it is kind of like an obvious, potential obvious outcome. And it sucks that that's what happened. Completely sucks. I miss him a lot, like fucking every day. Uh, so leading up to all that, we were doing one of our things of trying to come back together again. And he had written several songs and uh, wanted to do stuff, but he wasn't fit. He wasn't doing well, you know? And uh, we got together and we tried and Scott little from Leadfoot, who was the go-to guitar player for the blind mm-hmm. COC blind revisit thing. The number one guy for that. He, um, um, spent a lot of time working with Reed and hanging out with Reed and also fleshing out those songs, just doing these porch jams with him before he passed. And then, uh, also started writing new material. So there's a bunch of stuff that was tracked kind of with him and then directly after. And, um, so there's this whole kind of project looming, and we're just trying to grapple with how to put that out respectfully and not seem like it's exploiting yeah. exploited in any way, but more of a tribute to and to note the ones that Reed actually wrote and the songs that were part of that, that he, you know, that he was endorsing and, and loved that he, and then he tragically passed. So it's a really hard thing. We're trying to figure out how to do that. Right. And oh, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, you know, hopefully people in the know that are might see this in a bit, you know, they're like, fuck you, Carl, you're not supposed to talk about that. I don't know. So, you know, I don't know. So I, I'm just, we're just trying to figure that out, and uh, that's how I see it anyways. And uh, put the best foot forward and not uh, have it come off as something, you know, not cool. You know? yeah, it's, that's a, right. It, you, know, you, you get, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's a shitty situation because <clears throat> you have this music that you're proud of, but yet again, with the, the way people are these days, they, they, they'll think of it as a cash grab and not like you said, a tribute, but in your heart, you, it's fucking, I just want it's to absolutely music it. Yeah. And I, I, I just, just for the record, none of this has been a cash grab for me, man. I am a, you know, I'm a working guy, you know, like it's, I I do not own, I don't even, my wife has a car. uh, I don't even own a car. You know, like, it's like, same. (laughs) No, I'm just one of you. I'm just like everybody. Like I've done my shit, but there's zero money to be had in any of this. So it's never, never been about that. Um, even when we were opening up for Maiden, it was all like looking toward the future. I was just having this conversation with somebody who asked me, man, did you make some money back in the day? And I'm like, when we were on our biggest tour ever opening up Iron Maiden in sheds with like tens of thousands of people mm-hmm. or whatever, or, you know, 17,000 people, we were paying ourselves, <laughs> excuse me, uh, 25 bucks a day. But we were paying our roadies, our seven roadies, like back in 92, a grand or... 1200 bucks a week, which is amazing. And then plus, you know, uh, uh, plus per diems plus yeah. whatever. So, you know, like we were just 
paying it forward, trying to like move towards the future. So it was all at that time, like, Hey, where are we going with this? It wasn't ever like, Oh, we're going to sit back and buy cars and, you know, like pay off some amazing mansion. Where is that shit? Exactly. We were not even, we were close. We weren't even close ever, you know? And you know, I don't know what they're doing now, but I was never part of that. So that's a big misconception with a lot of people. Zero, zero money. <laughs> Fuck. I trust me. I know. And the thing is like, like I said, I, I've played, I've done, you know, fucking regional tours and shit like that. And I've also promoted yeah. shows too. So I've been the guy that's handing you guys the money. And uh, a lot of my friends that play in, you know, touring national bands, we've talked about this like on the down low and like, like I get how it goes. I'm like, there's touring expenses. Like that money isn't like, oh, you got paid fucking two grand that night. Here, let's divvy it up. No, you yeah. got to pay for gas. Yeah. You got to pay the fucking label back for oh. fucking shit. You got to pay for your fucking merch. And you come home if you can if you can make like a couple thousand dollars profit after thirty days on the road. Yeah, that's fucking you're, huge. Then you're a fucking genius. Yeah. I've never done that. <laughs> like, you don't know, no, you know what I mean? Like, maybe, but not really. You know, it's like. Okay, I got lucky this time. It was never like, oh, it all worked out according to plan. No, you know, never. And yeah. see, like, I've always been one of those guys, too. Just the way I was raised, and two, I like to fucking party a lot, or I used to like to party a lot. Um, like, when bands would come through, as soon as, like, they're done playing, I'm like, hey, meet me at the bar. I got your guys drinks all night long if you drink, you know? And they're right. always super fucking, you know, like, appreciative because I fucking sure. know that they're not making, they're not paying, they, their Lambo didn't get just paid off and shit. It's, you're fucking scrounging for money when you're on the road. It's fucking, it no. sucks. <laughs> but, that, but you know what that speaks to is the fact that um, what we're into, what you're into, what I'm into, what hopefully people watching this are into and their friends is that we're into it because it's meaningful, not because it's profitable. It's not about that. It's about heart and soul. Yep. It's about um, doing it because you love it, because you understand it, because you fucking need it. Exactly. You know, it's necessary. It's it's what like like it's what we eat and breathe. Besides, you know, other sh you know, it's a, the real deal. So that's what it always comes back to. It's like you know, we can joke and you know, but what brings us back? It's because we need this. It's because we want it. No. And the thing is, too, like for me, obviously not being a rich man, I don't fucking I work a full time job. I fucking teach guitar lessons to fucking make ends meet. But uh, <clears throat> like any time I get to leave the house to play a show or leave town to go play a show somewhere else, knowing that I'm very well not probably going to be in debt after that, you know, oh, it's going to cost me money to go. I still I would do it in a heartbeat because it's it's just what we love. It's what it's what we do and what we crave, yeah. especially for like you. Um, I, I'm not putting words in your mouth here, at least I hope I'm not, but those experiences of, man, you know, we got to tour Europe with fucking Soundgarden. We got to fucking play with Danzig, who, is he really that short live? <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I love the guy. He was always, uh, I, I mean, he, I, I can't, yes, I'm taller than him, but, <laughs> I just had to but say. <laughs> uh, no, 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 but no, you know, people talk a lot of shit about him and... Uh, you know, the guy is uh, just a, a raw, amazing talent that did it before most of you motherfuckers out there. Yep. Show some respect. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can be critical of our, our, of our idols, but uh, he takes a lot of shit he doesn't deserve. We were always cool and tight. That's we're old cool, punk rock yeah. guys. Uh, I, you know, it's not like I talked to him ever, <laughs> but... But when, when we had when we toured together, he was nothing but respectful nice. and ama and, and um, gave us full PA and was That's uh, a big thing. really just no, it's, yeah, it's a huge thing. Uh, you know, if anybody knows about that, he can let us sound as loud as him, yeah. which is a big deal. A lot. Most people don't know about that, that are just on the other side is that a lot of headlining bands will squeeze the opening bands volume so they don't come off as well. And see, that's cool and, that... Uh, uh, Hearing this no, and he it. was. No, he was. I, I think he's amazing. Uh, utmost respect for him. Awesome. Uh, he was uh, super cool. I just wanted to put that out there because uh, people need to know that That's, he's a, he's a, he's a total. He's a really great guy, and uh, um, you know he has a certain image, but behind the scenes, he's uh, straight up zero bullshit. And that's cool. I like hearing that kind of stuff because I'd like. Yeah. To, I like. 
hearing more of the positive aspects of uh, these people. We need, we need, we need to hear that because it's so we Everybody likes to talk shit. I mean, who doesn't, right? But exactly. let's 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 keep, let's keep it real, right? Fucking amen. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Like uh, in in my travels and my fucking promoting, I've only dealt with one person, one rock star who had the rock star attitude out of the dozens and dozens of bands that I've promoted. Ooh, let's talk shit on him. Who is that? <laughs> Chris fucking Barnes, man. Oh, well, what a shame. Yeah, yeah. he is. Uh, he is a diva rock star. <laughs> oh man. Oh well. Yeah. He's, I, you know, I think people like that are missing out on, uh, on, uh, having some killer conversations. That's all. And you know, and here's what I'm, all I'm going to say about it is when a promoter pays you a certain amount of money, and you, it was an all ages show. Show had to be done by 11. They wanted to do like an hour and 10 minute set. So we had it set at that time. Uh, he didn't get off his bus till 1035. So we had to, they played a 25 minute set and then he yelled at us. So. Damn you. How dare you yeah. not respect that? Yeah. It's just, it's. His, late, his lateness. No. Hey, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. But like I said, it's, it's uh, it, I'll take that one shitty fucking experience and to have like, you know, a hundred better ones, <laughs> which any right. kind of promoted, man, it's been, it's been great fucking seeing these and helping these bands out because that's what it is. Like a lot of the times, like you, you were saying, doing the one-off tours or the one-off like weekend shows and stuff when you're on tour, you can make that sure. extra money. Like, oh fuck, you know, we got a night off from this fucking Soundgarden tour. Let's go play this club a hundred miles away real quick. And sure. You can make that extra cash and it's fucking great to help out when you can, you know? Well, I gotta say, I really miss getting on the stage, man. I can't wait for... Uh, not only myself to get back on the stage, but absolutely every single one of you guys out there, uh, men and women, uh, whoever you are, whoever you call yourself, uh, with respects, I can't wait for all of y'all out there to get on stage and do your thing, whether it's in front of no people or a, a shitload of people or somewhere in between. It doesn't matter as long as you're up there expressing yourself and being real and being honest. I, I just... I can't wait for all of us to get back there to that place where we can get up there and do what this is all about, express ourselves and have a good time, you know? Exactly. I mean, so that being said, um, what is the, pl what is the plans for the future right now? Besides, like you said, you're kind of trying to work on that, um, getting that project out. Yeah. 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 No, uh, I've got some other things kind of brewing behind the scenes. I just, uh, Leadfoot's never going to be gone completely. We, we, uh, revisited some songs we wrote after the We Drink for Free album, which nobody has, uh, you know, from 03, but no, we, stuff we'd written back in like, you know, holy shit, like mid 2000s. And, uh, I tracked some of that stuff, um, um, uh, earlier this year or last year, sorry, okay. less than a year ago. Uh, a couple songs on that, and there's just other stuff brewing, like little little projects going on. Just I'm not ready to quite vocalize exactly what they are. I get it, I get it. So I don't want to misspeak and fuck up a launch. You know, no, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> but there, 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 no, there's stuff going on. So that it's really cool. Um, yeah, there's just stuff going on, man, and uh, it's all it's all part of the same thing, you know, like just uh, keeping it real and. You know, keeping it heavy. Yeah. And, and yeah, and uh, you know, tell it like it is. So where you're at? Because you're in North Carolina right now, right? Yeah, yeah, in Durham. Uh, that's where I live. What's Next uh, What's it like out there? I mean, obviously, a lot of states are different with their um, rules and regulations and stuff. Like we can have like half bar capacity, and we're like uh, shows are happening now, but they're not like huge. Obviously, what's going on out there? Um, actually no shows right now, unless I believe they're outdoor, to be honest, okay. but, uh, uh, the governor just issued something, I think today or yesterday, like just, just within the last day or so, uh, where they feel like things are going well and they want to expand bar slash nightclub capacity. So I'm not sure what that exact number is, but, um, it looks like we're kind of easing back into it. And, uh, here's to everybody either getting better or not getting sick at all and, and uh, 
all that, all of the above, man. Let's let's uh, do what we got to do. Be respectful of each other. Keep you know, do, and yep. then uh, bring it back, bring it all back. You know. Yeah, just try to get through this because, it, like you said, it's it, yeah, just craving to get back out there again. Like during this uh, whole process, uh, but right before this ha- all this went down, I quit one band, which I regret. It was bad timing with me but then started sure. another band but now it's like well now uh <laughs> when will we ever get to play never i don't know <laughs> uh it'll, it'll be back we just got to keep it positive man I, yeah. i'm not trying to see i'm not i'm honestly not really much of a uh, you know generally a very optimistic person you know <laughs> kind of but no with this you gotta be you gotta be or it's or what's what's the alternative just to you know you know exactly so you know is it, this has to happen because it has to happen. I fucking right? hope so. I fucking hope no, so. It, no, just, it, it's going to. Just uh, keep the faith, man. Right. Yeah. Carl, I've got one more question before you before we call. Sure. Right? No, no. Thanks for being so generous with letting me uh, ramble on. Man. Dude, I, I lo- I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, so this is uh, one of the questions I ask some people here and there. What if you could? Okay. If you could go back and talk to your 16 year old self. Oh God. Yeah. One of those. Got it. Got it. It's sappy. Yeah. yeah, It's all right. It's all right. What kind of, uh, what kind of advice would you give yourself or, or that being, what would you give advice to people up and coming trying to make it in the music scene? Like the ins and outs that people don't fucking think about, you know? Well, the first thing that came to mind before you said band, I thought about that. I was just, the first thing that just hit me really hard is don't be too hard on yourself. Just don't be so judgmental of yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. Like you got this. It's okay. Yep. It should, should is not, not supposed to be perfect. So don't think it's going to be perfect. So, and that applies to band stuff too, but just, you know, in general, don't, don't be hard on yourself. Just go for it. And, uh, accept the fact that you're going to fall on your damn face. You're going to, um, uh, ruin relationships, misunderstandings with band, fellow bandmates, with uh, significant others, whoever that you know, uh, parents, you know, whoever. It just, just, just go for it. Just be cool. Be honest. Um, my biggest mistake was not speaking my mind um, and saying what was really on my mind often, and and that's I think kind of a southern like thing too that I've learned is the passive aggressive. You know, yeah. <laughs> just just do yourself a favor and uh, and take it from someone who knows. It's just if something's on your mind, uh, you're not a dick for saying it. You're not an asshole. Just communicate, communication, communication, communication. It's the key to success in fucking everything. Hundred percent, man. So so that's that's what I got to say. Don't. Don't be too hard on yourself and talk, man. Just figure it out, you know, hash it out, yell at each other. It's okay. You know, it's, it's, you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, you know, don't, don't be, don't be a prick. Don't punch someone in the face or something. You know what I mean? But have that conversation. And and, and I'm saying this because I am brutally, brutally guilty. Like I still, I'm not saying what I should say some, you know, like, we all need to learn this, but especially with rock and roll, with with the with the band stuff, is just uh, you know get get that uh, channel of, of communication going yeah. because it's going to only take you to a better place. It's only going to make things easier, you know. And get that head trash out, you know. Like don't project because it's all bullshit, you know. We're all terror- terrorizing ourselves, you know, three in the morning or four in the morning. When it's all about just uh, saying, hey, you know what? You're like my best friend, you know, my guitar player or my drummer or, Mm -hmm. or, you know, I care about what you think. This is what I think. Deal with it. And you tell me what you think and we'll work it out. And that's my speech. I'm done. Carl, thank you so much. Like I said, I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm super excited that you mentioned it, that it's the 30 year anniversary of Blind coming up with the reissue. Here we go. Isn't that insane? Right. Fucking awesome. yeah. Like I said, I, I appreciate it, man. Um, I'd love to keep in touch with you. Like I said, keep in touch. Of let course. me know what's going on. Uh, hopefully, see you on the road someday soon. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Light a candle. I don't know. I don't know. You know. You know. 
do a thousand sit-ups. I don't know <laughs> what's going to make that happen. Nothing. We'll find just, a way. Just, let's, 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 let's find a way. Let's, let's, like I say, stay positive, keep it going. And, uh, I, I'm really grateful for your interest and, uh, anybody out there that's watching this. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, I, I'm still here. I'm still kicking. I'm not, uh, retired musically in any way it's just it is what it is right we're all doing our thing so um facebook uh you know I'm, you can you can find me on facebook i've got my own page and and there's king it and all this stuff but if you go to my my facebook page and i will be uh, posting stuff that's relevant if that matters and uh you know all that blah 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 <laughs> carl thank you very much and i will talk to you soon brother all right Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Have a good night, my man. It was an honor to talk to Carl Agel about just that. One of my favorite albums ever. I mean, I still listen to it pretty much weekly when I'm at the gym or just jamming on guitar here at home. So, Carl, thank you very much for all the insights of, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff and just the cool stories. It was great fucking chatting with you, man. Much respect. Cannot wait to hear some new stuff from you. And thank you. Thank you so much for that album. Moving on to the end of the show, folks. Xenophonic. This is a band from Omaha, Nebraska, um, along the same scene with like Chronographer um, Orpheus. They all kind of like share members, like how we do here in Fargo or any other fucking metal scene anywhere. It's just how it is. I mean, it is what it is. Not all those bands sound the same. They're all different. But you know, the members, you know, swap and shit. It's just just life in general how we do this, especially in the extreme metal scene. So Red Skies, Xenophonic. If you like the show, please share it. Uh, if you'd like to get your band featured on here, hit me up, Facebook, Instagram, here. I'd love to feature your band. Extreme Metal is my fucking love, always. So, Red Skies, Xenophonic, and as always, support the underground.